What's going on, everybody? This is Billy, one half of the Off the Glass podcast. And today, heading into week 12 of the NFL season, I am going to be reacting to Bleacher Reports, NFL Power Rankings, heading into the Thanksgiving games later on this week. I'm going to go ahead and get right into it and get it pulled up here on the screen. And I'm going to speed through some of these lower teams. I'm not going to sit up here and waste y'all's time and try to nitpick why I think this team should be the worst team and not the Panthers. It's not worth it. So I'm going to roll through some of these lower teams. Panthers at 32. Look, get Bryce Young some help. Get him an offensive line. Get him some receivers. He is in a terrible situation. No running game, no protection, no separation. Like their offense looks awful. Um, at 31, the Patriots, same thing. They're dealing with quarterback issues now. It sounds like, you know, Mac Jones' job is up in the air. I think a report came out that, um, you know, he may have lost a locker room. It's a lot going wrong in New England. Um, so, again, tough, tough, tough scene for them. Third, we got the Giants. Tommy DeVito did go out, got himself a win against the Commanders, which I cannot believe. But, um, look, this this team is tough. Um, with, you know, the Daniel Jones injury. But, again, rolling through the, these low ones here. Titans at 29. I'm interested to see what they do with Will Levis long term. I think depending on how the season finishes out, he may buy himself like another full season's worth of, you know, opportunity to showcase this, this team in front office, you know, what he can do and if he can develop and be their guy moving forward. So some intrigue there um, for the Titans. Cardinals at 28. Kyler's come back and looked a lot better um, and, and really in terms of his mobility, I think, faster than anything. So was, that's good to see, you know, one of the more explosive young quarterbacks in the league. Happy to see him back and healthy and playing and having fun again and making big time throws. This Texans game was not uh, it was a tough game um, for the Cardinals. They ended up losing right at the end, but they were in it all the way against the Texans, who are one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Bears at 27 should have beat the Lions. They should have beat the Lions, but still their offense confuses me. Um, their running game is interesting. I'm glad that they're running fields again, which is letting him get to his strengths. But um, still, I think fields can still be their guy. They just they have so much that needs to be tweaked from both a personnel and coaching perspective, I think, before they can really start to see some legitimate changes. Commanders at 26, Sam Howell is just, I don't know, he's a gunslinger. You never know. You can get a four-touchdown game from him. You might get a four-interception game from him. He's throwing that thing either way. Um, and like I said, they lost to a bad Giants team this week, so they deserve to be this low on the power rankings. Packers at 25. Um, Jordan Love has been real up or down this year. Again, another one I'm interested to see how he finishes out the season and what the Packers' plans are moving forward, um, if they're going to continue to give him opportunity um, and how much they'll give him before they kind of make a decision on whether he's the guy or if they want to go elsewhere. Um, the Rams at 24, I feel like this might be a little low with Stafford being back. Uh, maybe it's because of the injury to Cup, but they did beat Seattle in a division matchup. You know, obviously Geno was hurt for a good portion of that game, but he did come back and um, I think their kicker ended up missing the what would would have been the game winner. Um, but they're sitting at four and six, and they're not all the way out of it in the NFC West, and really have a, still have a chance to make the wild card if they can rattle off some wins here later in the season. Um, the Raiders at twenty three. Hey, five and six, Antonio Pierce. They had they had multiple chances against the Dolphins um, to to tie that game up and potentially win, um, and just weren't able to get it get it done. Aiden O'Connell obviously is going to struggle, but he has flashes where um, you see why he played as well as he did in the preseason. I think why they pulled Jimmy G to to give him this slot here. Um, so I, I'm interested to see how he pans out and really how this Raider season finishes up because again, they're a team who they could potentially sneak into the wild card um with, with where they're currently sitting as well. Um Tampa Bay, again, tough loss against the 49ers, but Baker, he's been playing well well as of late. Um I think this is a fair spot for them as well. Um, look, I'll be honest with you. I had very little optimism for Baker and this Buccaneers team. Um, so they've outperformed my expectations, even sitting at four and six. 
um, just in terms of how they played this year. So I'm impressed because of my low expectations with Baker. Um, 21, we got the Falcons sitting at four and six. Um, they were coming off of a bye week. Bijan is looking to get back involved in their offense again. Um, Arthur Smith still confuses me so much as a coach. I feel like he leaves so much meat on the bone in terms of how he utilizes his playmakers because between Bijan and Kyle Pitts and Drake London, this offense has the uh, at least the talent to be so much more explosive than they are. Um, and so I don't know. They got to figure that out because there's no reason that this offense should be where it's at. It should be much better uh, because of the talent that they have. You could put the Jets lower, honestly. I know they're four and six, but Zach Wilson has officially gone bench. They announced that Tim Boyle is going to be starting in their, their Black Friday game against the Dolphins. I don't have a ton of optimism there. He, Tim Boyle has not played a ton of snaps in the NFL. It, it feels like it's just going to be the same thing. They held on to Zach L Wilson a lot longer. They didn't go out and make any free agent signing to try to get a bridge guy to potentially hold on and keep their roster afloat until Aaron Rodgers comes back. And that may have really ruined this season for them because their defense is still playing at the elite level that it was last year. But look, when you're putting up six to 10 points a game on offense, you're not going to win games in the NFL like that. So the fact that they're even four and six is crazy, but the Bills put it on them. Defensively last week, there was just so many turnovers for the Jets, um, and that led to, to Zach Wilson's benching, and he's now the third stringer. So he's his season is probably done barring you know massive injuries to this QB room for New York. Um, it's just tough. That may be it for Zach Wilson as a Jet and – potentially him as an NFL quarterback, which is tough, but is just a reality of, you know, his play. The film doesn't lie. Um, the Colts sitting at 19, they're five and five coming out of a bye week. Jonathan Taylor looks like what may have been a committee backfield. He's fully taken over the touches in um, still one of the best backs in the league. They can really lean on him in that offensive line in the running game. So um, the Colts are an interesting team. Again, not expecting much out of them. It's tough with the injury to Anthony Richardson, but um, this run game with Jonathan Taylor is good. It's very good. Um, the Chargers at 18, I would put them lower. This defense is disgusting. I cannot believe Brandon Staley, being the defensive coach that he is, has had this long of a leash with how many defensive lapses they have had throughout the seasons that he's been the coach. They have one of the most expensive defenses in terms of salary, and they consistently – give up an absurd amount of yards and an absurd amount of points. And no matter what Justin Herbert and that offense does, it never feels like it's enough. And on top of that, you can see here in the picture, Joey Bosa, I think he broke something in his foot. Just everything is going wrong for this Chargers defense. Um, and they end up losing to the Packers in a game where there were multiple dropped touchdowns by Chargers receivers. Quentin Johnson would have had a go-ahead walk-in one that he dropped. Keenan Allen dropped one that hit him right between the chest. It just was a bad showing from the Chargers, and it just sums up their season. Their defense is not playing well. They're giving up too many points, um, and Justin Herbert so much just is reliant on him to be Superman and save the day, and he can put up 35, 38 points, and that hasn't been enough. He put up 38 against the Lions, and that was not not enough to win. If your team is giving up that many points on the defensive side of the ball, you're not going to win a lot of games in the NFL. So, look, I, I'm still stunned that Brandon Staley has his job, being the defensive guy that he is and the performance that his defense puts out. But – yeah, I, I don't think the Chargers are going to make the playoffs this year, and that's a shame because there's way too much talent, way too much talent on this roster. Um, and I have an inclination that a lot of it has to do with their defense trying to be too cute at times in the way that they're running so much exotic coverages that it's hurting them, that they are end up not covering what they need to be. You see them doing a lot of weird stuff and, you know, rolling coverages to do these cover two inverts or these, you know, like cover six or like getting into quarters out of weird looks to try to disguise things. And there's just so many holes when you watch these, some of their games, 
people are wide open against this secondary. Um, so yeah, I could do a whole video on the Chargers and and you know the issues that they have, but really I think they could be lower than 18 because I have no expectations for this team as long as their defense is playing like this. Um, the Broncos at 17, hey, I'm 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 buying the Broncos stock right now. They're on a little bit of a hot streak. They don't look the greatest, but hey, it's hard to win games in the National Football League, and they are stringing them together. And they're sitting at five and five, and they're not entirely out of it in the AFC West. You know, after the the Monday Night Football loss for the Chiefs last night, they're sitting at seven and three. Um, so hey, Denver is uh, they're not out of the playoffs at all, despite you know how bad it looks. It feels like them getting seventy dropped on them against Miami was years ago like it feels like this is a whole new denver defense um russell wilson quietly has been playing significantly better football has not gotten talked about enough he's still my pick for comeback player of the year because of that really because of how bad he played last year um but this team is they're on the move they are on the move they won another tough one there against minnesota um and look, they have a not a bad schedule where they can go ahead and eke out a couple more wins and they could legitimately be a playoff team in Denver. So that would be quite the turnaround. And I'll be the first one to admit, I didn't think they'd be able to do it based on how they looked early on. So kudos to Sean Payton and that staff for, for turning things around and, and getting this ship right there in Denver. The Saints at 16, I'm not even going to spend a lot of time here. If you've watched the podcast, you know my thoughts on Derek Carr as a quarterback. I think he's going to cap where this team can go. Um, I'm not impressed with the Saints. I'm just, I'm not. And the NFC South as a whole is so weak. It, it's such a weak division that someone's going to have to make the playoffs. And it may be the Saints that end up being the team, but I don't see them making any noise at all in the postseason. Bengals at 15, they can be a lot lower. It's already been confirmed that Joe Burrow is going to be out for the rest of the season with that wrist injury, which is such a tough break for this Bengals team because he already had fought and battled through the calf injury and just started to finally look healthy. They were looking hot. They were stringing wins together um, for him to be out for the season. That is that's curtains for the Bengals this season. Um, I just don't see a world where they can find any guy that they can bring in that can get them into the playoffs and have them in any type of contention in the AFC. Um, it was just tough because, you know, this is the second real major season ending injury for Joe Burrow here in his young NFL career. So hope that he can bounce back and stay healthy from this because when he is, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the game, regardless of age. So, um, you know, hopeful, hopeful for him to come back healthy from this, but yeah, the Bengals season, I think it's, it's pretty much cooked for them. Next one, they got the Vikings at 14. Hey, Josh Dobbs, man, what a story from him. He's another guy who I think could be comeback player of the year. Just how well he played in Arizona despite the record and him coming in Minnesota, stringing together those first two wins on 10 days, you know, having the playbook and being with the team. Um, and then you know, obviously the tough loss I mentioned against Denver, um, but he has the Vikings in a spot where Justin Jefferson is going to be coming back soon. Um, and they can be in the thick of the NFC wild card there. Um, I don't think they'll be able to catch Detroit um, for the NFC North, but they have to be a wild card team. But again, Josh Dobbs has been playing great football. Um, Ty Chandler has looked pretty good. You know, Alexander Madison has had the fumble issue, so he may end up being more of the lead back in that committee role um, between the two of them. Um, but Josh Dobbs has been powering this offense. Jettas might be coming back. Um, I was interested if they would even bring him back when, when he got hurt. It looked like their season may have been lost, especially after Kirk got hurt. But Josh Dobbs came in, brought some life to this team. And so I like this. I like this spot for the Vikings. I think 14 is good because they're a sneaky team. They are a sneaky team. The Steelers at 13. <laughs> they just fired Matt Canada today, so I know Steelers fans are probably rejoicing. I don't know what that means their offense is going to look like moving forward, but it cannot get worse, right? It cannot be worse than what we saw. I think Kenny Pickett had 50 passing yards going into the fourth quarter 
of that game on Sunday against Cleveland, which credit to the Browns defense is phenomenal. But look, 50 passing yards in three quarters is not going to cut it in the NFL. And the play calling is, is just so uninspiring. It's short throws. It's screens to nobody. Um, swing passes that are going nowhere. It just – there's – no vertical threat. This offense just looks so bad week in, week out, and their defense keeps them in every game and kept them in that game against the Browns all the way until the very end. So interested to see what their new OC does coming in and, and how he changes what this offense looks like. I'm hopeful it at least just allows there to be some vertical threat. Throw the ball down the field. You have to if you want to stretch any defense, because if not, they're going to sit on all these little dink and dunk throws that Kenny Pickett is doing. And this offense is going to be very, very stale. Uh, shout out Jalen Warren though. It's been super, super explosive for them. Um, this season has a, has had a really good breakout year for Pittsburgh. Um, him and Najee the last couple of weeks have looked like, have looked like a really good one, two punch. So that's at least a bright spot um, for Steelers fans there. 12, they got Seattle. I'm, low on Seattle. I've not really been impressed with them. I feel like Geno has regressed a little bit from last season. Um, the running game has been good with Kenneth Walker, but he's now hurt with an oblique injury. Um, Charbonnet may be able to come in and kind of pick that up a little bit, but they just don't look to be as good as the Seahawks team last year. Um, they're, like I said, their offense has not been as explosive. Geno hasn't looked as good. Um, and I just, I, if when I think about the Seahawks compared to the rest of the better teams in the NFC, I would take all of them over Seattle. Um, so 12 just feels a little high, um, but the NFC is eh, a little bit of the weaker conference. So maybe that's fair. Um, but yeah, sitting at six and four, they probably will end up being a wild card team. I, I think how the rest of the season shakes out, but not, not super impressed with Seattle this year. The Texans at 11. I think that this is – they might be a top-10 team right now, um, but I'm projecting a little bit because if you look at the rest of their schedule, and I'm actually going to pull it up here um, just so I, I have it right, but they have a favorable schedule going into the rest of the year. Um, the Jaguars would be a tough game, but then they do have the Broncos, the Jets, Titans twice, and finish with the Colts. Should be able to easily beat the Colts and the Titans twice. Um, Jets – Tough defense, but look, I just spent a lot of time telling you that I don't have any confidence in their offense right now. That could be a winnable game. The Broncos, I think, are is a winnable game. The Jaguars could even be a winnable game. Those are going to be tough, but winnable. Um, Browns, their defense is playing on another level, so would not be shocked if they don't lose that one. But you know, they could wrap up the season. What is that? You know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, like two, three losses. And that puts them in a really good spot um, in the, uh, in the AFC playoff picture. Um, and also does a lot for CJ Stroud's MVP case, him and Tank Dell. They are on a tear right now. Tank Dell is extremely explosive. CJ Stroud is getting him the ball. They're hitting big plays every single week. Dawn Schultz has been nice underneath. Um, kind of as a security blanket tight end for him as well. Um, Devin Singletary also looks like he's revived their running game, which was missing from them earlier in the year. So uh, that been big. That's been big for the Texans for sure. Um, and their defense, they got Derek Stingley back, which was huge. He made a couple of huge plays um, in their game against the Cardinals this Sunday. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for the Texans. I'm high on the Texans. I think they could be higher than 11. Um, and I might put them ahead of the Browns just because of the injury to Deshaun and what I saw out of Dorian Thompson Robinson. He's a young rookie quarterback. It's it's going to be tough. Their defense is one of, if not the best in the NFL right now. I think Miles Garrett is the favorite for the defensive player of the year, and rightfully so. He causes absolute havoc on that side of the ball, but so offense is going to be lethargic. They're going to, you know, they're not going to produce a lot of points. It's going to be very difficult for them you know, every single week. So I would probably put the Texans in front of them just for that, but um, their defense is going to be able to probably carry this seven and three record into the playoffs. But I just, I don't see a world where they're able to carry them to any type of, you know, meaningful playoff run. 
um, as long as DTR is a starting quarterback. But they did just sign Joe Flacco, all right? Um, and so, you know, with that, maybe he ends up being the guy there, you know, that they feel like he gives them the best option to win games later on in the season. So interested to see how that plays out. Um, nine, they have Jacksonville. Um, it was good to see them not only get their offense back on track after getting really stomped on by the 49ers, but them getting Calvin Ridley involved as dynamic as he is. He had a huge day on Sunday. Um, Trevor Lawrence had a huge day on the ground as well. Um, I'm still, I still have some concerns with this team. I need to see it consistently week in, week out. But when their offense is going and Trevor Lawrence is able to deal the way that he did on Sunday, in addition to moving on the ground like he did, their offense is going to be really, really dynamic. And they're going to be a solid AFC team. Um, They should be able to wrap up their division pretty handily. Um, And may be able to make a decent playoff run. And look, we know that Trevor Lawrence – has the you know the chops in the playoffs? Um, we saw it against the Chargers last year, and he was in a dogfight with the Chiefs as well for a good portion of that game. So um, I, I like seeing Trevor Lawrence in the playoffs. I'm hopeful that he can you know really get consistent as this year wraps up um, and they can get hot going into the postseason. At eight, we have the Buffalo Bills. I think this is too high, and I think that because. I do not think the change from Ken Dorsey to Joe Brady is really going to move that much on the offensive side of the ball. I think they have larger schematic issues that need to be addressed in terms of what kind of plays they're running, the you know the motions or really the lack thereof in their offense. Um, and the Josh Allen turnover stuff, I'm not going to get into the whole thing here because it could be so much more, but he does have to dial back the decision-making. Um, and on top of that, look, the injuries to their defense, it's hard to understate. You know, they're missing so many guys. Trey White, obviously, Matt Milano as well. Um, they're missing some of their best playmakers on that side of the ball on top of the offensive struggles. Yes, they did just beat up on the Jets this past week. Um, which is a good defense, but again, a lot of that happened off of the back of their defense beating up on the Jets' offense. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Joe Brady coming in will, will kind of revitalize this offense a little bit, but I need to see what this team looks like moving forward. They have an extremely, extremely tough schedule to round out the rest of the season. Um, I have it pulled up here. They're uh, – in Philly, then in Kansas City, they have to play Dallas, the Chargers, the Patriots, and the Dolphins. It's a tough, tough schedule. A lot of really good defenses, a lot of tough road games as well. So I don't know. I'm not moved by their win against the Jets. If they can go and compete against Philly or Kansas City, I'll sit up here and eat these words, but I think eight is too high for Buffalo. Um, Seven, they have the Dolphins. I've said it multiple times on the podcast. They are still looking for that marquee win against a good team. But at the end of the day, they've beaten all the teams that they should have beaten. um, And they're sitting at seven and three on the season. Um, Jalen Ramsey has come back and looked phenomenal on that side of the ball. It's a huge boost to their defense. Um, They plan on Black Friday against the Jets. So probably will be another win for them there. And they'll be sitting at eight and three on the season. But yeah, really, really still, they need to get a win against another good team in the AFC or NFC, I think, to really be considered a team that can make some noise in the playoffs this year because they've struggled every time they've played um, any top team, you know, in in the league this year, most recently against the Eagles. Um, Their offense did not show, you know, put out a great showing in that game. Um, At six, they have the Cowboys. Um who, look, similarly to the Dolphins, don't have a big win against a, you know, dominant team in the NFL, but they've beaten up on all the bad teams that they've played. Um, And the the last, you know, really serious team that they played, being the Eagles, were in it all the way until the very end. Dak played very well in that game. Um, And 
What has impressed me the most about Dak the last, you know, five or six weeks, him being able to get out of the pocket, get out of structure and make plays with his legs and improvise. That is where I think Dak Prescott is at his best. That's why Dak Prescott is starting to get thrown into the MVP conversation because of the team's record and his stats. Um, And they also, I think, have a eh, they have an okay schedule to round out the year. They still have to play the commanders twice, which. Fingers crossed as a Cowboys fan, should be two wins. Um, They play Seattle. They still have to play uh, Philly in Dallas. Um, And then they're at Buffalo, at Miami, and then have the Lions at home as well. Um, So a couple of tough games in there. Like I said, hopefully they can get the split against Philly, um, and that'll be good again, showing that they can finish and beat one of the top teams in the league. As his offense continues to get more dynamic and explosive, if you've listened to the pod, you know that's one of been my that's been one of my biggest gripes as a Cowboys fan with Mike McCarthy as a play caller. This offense at times looked like JV esque, so simple, so stale, so vanilla. Um, So I don't know if exactly where it's coming from. If it's you know Dak taking it into his own hands, I'm sure there's conversations that's been had between him and Mike to allow him to get a little bit more out of structure. um, You know, you know moving around, getting outside the pocket, but it's working. I like it. They're hitting bigger plays. Brandon Cooks has started to get involved more. CD was on a crazy tear there for a little bit. That pulled off against the Panthers this past week, but um, I'm liking the way his offense is playing. And, hey, I said it after the the Diggs injury that Deron Bland would be ready to step up, and you see he's on the picture here. Four pick sixes this year. It ties the NFL record um, for pick six, pick sixes in a single season. He's been hooping. He definitely was ready to make that jump from being a nickel corner to the outside guy. So shout out to him. Um, but yeah, I I have some cautious, very cautious optimism as a Cowboys fan um, for them through the rest of the season. Um, and look, they still have a chance because they play the Eagles again because they play the Eagles again, excuse me, to still have a shot to win the division in the NFC East. So, you know, a lot is still within their own control there in Dallas. At five, you have the 49ers. Again, they've looked to, you know, they were on that three-game skid, but they've gone back on track. Brock Purdy has looked phenomenal. I think he had a perfect passer rating um, on Sunday in their game against Tampa Bay. He did 158.3. Um when this offense is playing like they are, they're a hard team to stop. They have so many weapons. They're so dynamic. Kyle Shanahan is a wizard at marrying up the run and the pass and so many different motions to give you so many different looks on the offensive side of the ball. Brock Purdy plays with great timing and anticipation. Um, they look phenomenal. Uh, the toughest part right now, I know Talanoa Hofunga just tore his ACL, so get well soon to him and prayers up for him as well. A key, key safety for them on the defensive side of the ball. One of my favorite safeties to watch in the NFL. Um, but look, their defense still has a ton of playmakers all over the place, and if this offense is playing like this, they are a Super Bowl contender easily, easily. Um, at four... We have the Ravens, um, another team that just got hit with a big injury. Mark Andrews, I think they said it's a a lower leg and ankle injury. Um, I guess it is not as bad as they thought it could be, and he potentially can come back this year. It was initially feared that that might be the end of his season. Um, But either way, the the biggest and best receiver for Lamar Jackson is going to be out for probably the rest or at least most of the rest of the regular season. But they have receivers who have stepped up. Odell has looked better. Zay Flowers has continued to look good. Nelson Aguilar has had his moments. Their running game is on another level right now between Lamar and Gus Edwards and Keaton Mitchell. Um, So their offense has looked super, super dynamic. I think they lead the league in sacks as well. So their pass rush is getting after it. They have a great linebacking core between Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith. This Ravens team, like I said, coming into the season was dangerous and would be a year would be the year because of the roster construction and bringing in the new OC that Lamar could really make some noise in the AFC and make that deep playoff run. And I'm still hopeful that despite the Mark Andrews injury, that is going to be the case for the Ravens this year. I probably would put them ahead of Detroit as you know explosive as their offense has looked. 
Um, I would take the Ravens defense ahead of the Lions defense right now. Um, but Detroit has looked great um, despite, you know, a rough showing from Jared Goff this past Sunday against Chicago. He was able to battle back and they ended up winning that game down the stretch there. But, you know, the, the Lions are sitting at eight and two, which I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think they said is the, the first time they've been eight and two since like the 1960s and JFK was president. Um, so the first time they've been eight and two since they put color in the TV. Um, so shout out to the Lions in Detroit. Dan Campbell was my coach of the year pick. I think he's at this point should be the runaway favorite. I don't and barring an absolute implosion. Um, the turnaround that he's done with this franchise in just a few seasons is nothing short of spectacular. Um, so shout out to him and credit to Dan Campbell at two, the Kansas city chiefs. And I'm gonna be honest. I think this is too high and it's on full display for probably the third or fourth time this season. Their receiving core needs help. It's too many drops, and the drops at this point are costing them games single-handedly, notably the one last night, MVS dropping what would have been a touchdown catch from Patrick Mahomes. People want to debate the pass, whatever. At the end of the day, at that moment, down by four, that late in the game, it hits you clean in the hands in stride. You've got to come down with that football in that moment, and he was not able to. It ended up costing the Chiefs the game. And their offense has not been the Chiefs offense that we've seen in the past years. They, I think, are averaging less than six points in the second half of games this year. And this might have been the second time in like three or four weeks they didn't score a point in the, the second half of a game. Um, so that is, at least on the offensive side of the ball, um, so that is definitely concerning. Teams are just starting to get up and mug and double team bracket. You know, the Dolphins even triple teamed Kelsey. Um, on possessions when they played them and daring daring any other receiver to go and make a play and they're not stepping up for Patrick Mahomes. So I'm really concerned. I'm concerned about the Chiefs. So I think two is too high. I think you have to put them further back because of that. Um, and leaving the last team here, the Eagles sitting at nine and one. I'm going to be honest with you. And this is me putting my bias aside, even as a, a Cowboys fan. It's not the prettiest nine and one. But at the end of the day, you have to respect it because, like I said earlier, it's hard to win games in the NFL, and they're doing it at a high level. Again, winning nine of their 10 games that they've played this year. They've played a ton of top teams. They've beaten those teams, even if they're close games against, um, like I said, with Dallas or Kansas City. Um, and so they've even gotten into tight games with some of the worst teams in the NFL. But even every single time, they find a way to get the job done and win those games. So look, you have to tip your cap. You have to give credit to them. Their offense, I still think, looks a bit out of sync at times. We're getting a little bit later into the year. I thought it would have kind of come more cohesive. Obviously, they have new coordinators um, after their Super Bowl run last year, but there's still some time for them to continue to get better and really string, continue to string really these wins together um, as they wrap up the season and look to, um, again, because they're 9-1, and one, the best record in the NFL, um, the one seed is they control their own destiny, right? If they went out, they get the one seed um, and the road to the Super Bowl through the NFC would have to go through Philly, which is always a huge, huge benefit in the playoffs. Um, and they, they got to be hungry. I think Jason Kelsey talked about on his podcast. He said that you don't realize how much you really want to win a Super Bowl until you lose one. So even though he went that many years at the beginning of his career before they won that first one in 2017, I think he wants the second Super Bowl even more than he did before because he knows what it's like to make it to the final game and not be able to get the job done. So I know this team is hungry um, to go out and, and get back to the Super Bowl and finish the job this time. So look, I, I can't argue with them being the number one team in the NFL, the best record. They have the marquee wins. They have the, the talent. They're playing at a great level, um, and they can win multiple ways. They're, they, you know, Last night, a lot of their yardage was done on the groundwork with Swift being able to bust off a lot of huge runs there, uh, a lot of huge runs in that game. But, again, we've seen in a lot of weeks, A.J. Brown was on a ridiculous tear. Jalen Hurts, as a passer, is playing phenomenally this year. Um, so their offense can be very dynamic. It's just a matter of consistency throughout games and being able to put teams away early. 
Um, they continue to allow teams to creep up and hang around longer than I think they so, think they should. So that's going to be an emphasis for them as they finish up this season. But that is going to do it for Bleacher Report's power rankings. I'm not going to lie. Those were not bad. Um, I, I don't think they were too far off. I think they were pretty on point with a lot of their rankings here. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Like I said, this is Billy, one half of the Off the Glass podcast. Um, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and follow us on the socials that you see there at the bottom at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Um, and I'm out. Peace.